it's an honor for me to introduce our keynote today. He's known locally, provincially, nationally, and internationally. Mr. Wallace Fox brings a wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and many, many years of experience. It is my honor to introduce uh, Mr. Wallace Fox and to present the protocol. Uh -huh. Thank you, Russell. I'm not Kiam pugi te nosse moniana ni hiana pihtosi spiksuiti. Homsiki kehtaan hano humaganti kite tamskait no semantoi hone. Vespie ton yuksehtoi hasei tonam semantu minutuski nehima. But <laughs> Tahtogisigaumix <laughs> The <laughs> Ki will the sword you go with the man that's a moyan. No to go up, say no up, and talk that no sir. We are in man or tinny than we are in man. Oh, my gun of the come on, more puny head. Now we can get that big and don't stone on me. Who <laughs> Kikiti mu awo tega yuska piusi tatogi ego ina nasku mu kagium sebani ano ta igi witi witkines umsemao Ernestine Quinny iwana nims kikje sago kanas ten kikte ogman utagi kita maapsen utagi hayan yuskinigan. 
maga he wono he no ko magante he give ich tamo na ko sko pe ge ge ta pa ko me o maga ga wa taman go se he gitte po ko kan ton sto na man tan sto e taman tan se he gi swas ko vi ko ko magan no pa me muni a we ta ko te Pa me so ma am to ne che gane ko eskena ma mo eseko he gi ne hi um to ne che kan ai si no a no che ko um se tak te gi ma am to ne che kan pe won pe so se he ge te yu te wu yu te num se ko as ko e pe ma he ko so me ta ko te ge ko ki te ne che kan no o ma ga we ta ho ta ma Ho he me na te pama to na mo som pan ma ne ke te ne ka ma na te pama to na e ki a so ta ma go si an he ki cho ka ma so ho me na gen to to ske o ma tu e pa che ha yo ska pe o so ya e na so ma ge an en ko te an e ki ska ta ke an ha no se ma pe ve a che mo sta ha o mane hi o o te o te pi ke sfa e spi o mone a o ya o te o te pi ke sfa e ge tu e pe ke so sfa nan to ko ta si ke ta so po na e ge pe to no kompa ni te ko so sfa ge da in the 40s in the 30s o te ne ka ni Mayo pito so pig na oso ni wispay egite na mayapo, and this makes so much sense. And I'll translate this before I get into that. In order for me to speak about this, I spoke in my language, our language, the Cree. Nihio pigasko. The old man that taught me a lot of these ceremonies always said, "No matter where you go, acknowledge the Creator." He tamskat to go gakio in His name, because that is who we serve. And always be humble. This is a teaching in itself. I was invited by Russell to come here. I'm going to talk about these things. I was a young counselor at 21 years old. I was a chief for the third largest community in Saskatchewan. When I was 25, today when I look at young men having babies and children, living with their moms and gokums and man. If they had the parenting she had, I had people older than us, we wouldn't be where we are today. No responsibilities at all. No parenting at all. I had to learn a lot of these things the day I quit drinking. <coughs> I used to be one of the wildest, craziest people in Onion Lake, just like everybody else. But no one is perfect, my relatives. We all went through challenges. We all went through mistakes. Mosom said, "The only one that's perfect is Creator, not us." But what we need to know is learn from those mistakes and recognize that. I ask the old people in our language to forgive me when I speak. I'm not here to teach. I'm not here to lecture. My job and my role is to remind, and also to waken the spirit, because everything that's alive has a spirit. A blade of grass, even a little ant, has a spirit. A rock has a spirit. Everything that the Creator made on this earth. When people say. All my relations. What do they mean? 
We are connected to the land. We are connected to the earth. We are connected to the animal kingdom. And if we were to look at the history of our people, the origin, how many of you have heard these old people pray like this? How mamo tawi mo? Di magitaon, ikagi sumutot taman kikseot so. Kagi si kiti magitaon nista may mahagan kaya mixiniste si magito. The way you listened and you pity the first human have that same pity on you. Kinsta meima gun. Our language is so beautiful and so powerful. It has a spirit. See this language I'm using right now? I'm talking to you from here. Earlier, I was speaking from here. There's a difference, a huge difference. And you as educators are teaching the youth, the children. You all went to university. You all went, took training. And I commend you and I respect you with my heart. Because I don't have those papers. From nursery to grade 12, you teach structured classroom, academic. But now, lately in the last decade, I've seen land-based learning. Wow. What is land-based learning? I don't mean no disrespect. Keep my soul no ma. So I had to learn all these things. A lot of tobacco, a lot of cutting down lodges, trees to build lodges, singing, smudging, filling up pipes. I had to do a lot of these things. And I used to come here with Muslim, build lodges here, Sundance lodges. And this is where they used to say, after they were watching me, a lot of them, Stam Nusum, that I would go to their tent. Then they would tell me these things. And they said, in the future, you're going to be reminding a lot of people. So listen from in here. I don't write notes. I try to keep everything in here. So I'm going to go into this for the next 30 minutes, I guess. It is indeed an honor for me to once again be able to share. I chose not to run two years ago in Indian Lake as chief. It was my choice. <clears throat> I've been doing it for almost 30 years in leadership. And what I see we need to fix ourselves. That choice has to come from in your heart. This is what I had to find. Everything we do is a circle of life in four directions. <clears throat> On the right hand side over here, the day before treaty. And down here after treaty, what happened? And this is what we are today. So I left this blank, the top one, the future, because I don't know what the future is. I would love to hope and pray that we have a beautiful future for the next generation. So, if you can treat me. Push that quarter. See, the day before treaty, on my big we had laws, Kichuwaswona, Mantuwaswona, Creator's Natural Law, It was not a church, it was a way of life, is how it was explained to me. Ceremonies, spirituality, I touched about that on that a bit. We are a spirit. 
And in essence, everything else that was born, that we were born with, all the virtues that you teach and talk, and we had our own government systems in place. And we had this territory creator lent us. Moniao and other people, Ushnabe people and different tribes, they call it Turtle Island. And we had peoples, we had family. Education was a lifelong learning experience from the day you opened your eyes. Health. We didn't need doctors. We didn't need metformin. We didn't need... I quit taking those, by the way. <laughs> we didn't need any of that because Kikawi no provided it. The earth provided those medicines. But those medicines have a spirit. And you need to have that faith and that belief system. Language. Independence. How many of you people, when you just observe, I observe a lot of people, a lot of our people to walk like this, right? I see that, round dance, power, meeting. We need to empower ourselves. That is something that was taken away from our people. And we pass that on from this generation to this generation to this young man's generation. And now we're passing it on to the children. I've seen that in leadership. I've seen that everywhere I go. We're not independent no more. Many of us. So we had all that. Do you, you think it was a beautiful way of life? And then the government of Canada had the audacity and the Western world to say we were savages, we were not human beings. So now, in September 9, 1876, a treaty was entered into Fort Pitt, which is just a few miles from Onion Lake. August 26th, I believe, or 24th in Fort Carlton before that. In August 26th, the infamous Indian Act was passed as law in Ottawa. And we had no Google, we had no internet. We had our people that had spiritual gifts. But they didn't tell our people that Indian act. They never told people that there was law in Ottawa at the time of Treaty 6 that everything that was agreed on, they were going to destroy and break. Maga, our people, we all, they believed in their way of life, they're humble, outlawing ceremonies. Give you an example of that. I was over in, in Chuam's community. And I was asking people, they have two days of sun dance over there. I went to Whitefish. Some of them have two days. We have it four days. So I gave protocol. Got my chicken. How come? I wanted to understand. This is how it was interpreted. Usang 
Mikko Sagei kaki tak tita pit hukum nak kenal pegas Sagei. The black robe, the priest, the RCMP, the red coat. We had to dismantle. We had to move camp because this ceremony and all ceremonies were banished, outlawed in that Indian Act. The reserve systems were created. In our language, Ishkongana, something left set aside. And Muslim Jim, his father was in Fort Pitt, and I had the learning of the teaching of the oral understanding of this firsthand, not everything. The reserve was set aside here As our elders got tired, they would be kept here with societies, women and men, to look after them as they got old. Ceremonies were to be conducted here. And Ochimnaho's people were supposed to continue traveling, as they had did prior to treaty. But that Indian act said no. And of course, our family systems were so intact, so beautiful, so powerful. And they broke that and they segregated that through the contract they had with the Catholic Church, the government. Take this child away, put him in this building. And don't let the parents come after them. You can't leave the reserve until the Indian agent says yes. So what good is, what does it look like? To me, I love horses, animals, cattle. It's like a big corral. If a horse gets out of the corral, you chase it back in. A cow out of the pasture, you chase it back in. That's what happened in that permit system in my thinking loss of parenting, loss of language. Those two, over the years of working with people that went through the school system, I've been doing ceremonies for 30 years. And when this came out, I had people from all over different communities when they had to disclose, when they applied for that 100,000. I fought against it when I was chief, not trying to blow my own horn. There was a big AFN meeting in Edmonton. When that 350 million was announced, and I remember saying this as if it was yesterday, that's gonna open a lot of wounds. That money will not cure people. It will make lawyers, car salesmen, therapists, psychologists rich. This is what is needed. I said, and the willingness to fix this broken heart. Because we are all wounded spirits. But they passed it. I've cried with women that were 70, men, older people. I've listened to their stories. I've listened to my late dad and my late mother. I'm the only one in our family that is able to hear what happened to them. So I know what happened in our community happened everywhere. And I've traveled all over this continent, Turtle Island. I've had people say, well, residence of school doesn't affect me because I didn't go. And I say, well, all due respect, getting here on. Oh, it did affect us. My older siblings went to that. I went to their day school. I got just as much hell as they did. 
big school. I never wonder why. Do you remember Jima and I met school again here? I mean, we know. Why the hell did they want us to not to speak when they learned it? Ah, that pisses me off. See, I get emotional. You know, uh, I'll tell you a story. I was telling these stars. He came to the sweat the other day here at my place. Bruce and, uh, you know, First Communion, when you go, body of Christ, da-da-da-da. Nah, it's not a body, it's just a... Anyways, we used to move, get moved from the school to the church in Onion Lake, of some, many of you know where the town village is. There's a Catholic church there, so we got bust in a little green van. I was about this small, can you believe it? I was that small. <laughs> Not like this. So I'm lining up. So it was my turn. The priest. Body of Christ. Just as he was going to. I fell. I collapsed. And I woke up in Paradise Hill Hospital. I had an appendicitis attack. So to this day, I never received First Communion. And then when I came back to RC school, Catholic boarding school that time, I'm your school man, you devil. But you want to. And I remember asking Sister Bertha, speaking our language is like working for the devil. Hey, sister? Ba, ba. No French, nanny. Well, you must be the devil too. Why? Because you said machimanto to me. And anyways, I never received First Communion. So I was called that by some of them nuns. Evil child and all this other stuff. That I was a rebellious child. I would speak, I would speak. If the nuns and the priests come and whip me or do whatever, I would swear at them and creep. Then go like that, fall down. Didn't hurt. <coughs> but you know, we can laugh about those things today, but that is the real, the reality of what our parents didn't have. I've asked many of our people, do you speak the language? No, my parents didn't want to teach me because they went to boarding school. And because my Muslim and my Goko went to boarding school, they didn't want me to feel what they went through. They loved us, but they didn't know how to explain the reason why. And I say this respectfully, the family systems is what needs to happen. He's adopted into Delbert Wapas's family, he's my brother-in-law. So extended Nistas. And that's something that needs to be taught. But how can we teach this? When I speak this way, there is no meaning of that spirit conversing into the other people. Hey, you guys know this guy? So next slide, loss of language and parenting. <laughs> You know, one of my friends that works in this field, and I say this respectfully, I'm not, I don't like swearing, and you don't hardly hear me swear, except when I talk about the government. I'm just kidding. Look, look at it this way. If I can have your attention. No tawi. Nikawi. Ntawe mao. 
need son. Father, mother, sister, brother. Right? In our language, that's what I said. When our people were to discipline my cousin Jason here in Tuam, his dad and my late dad were cousins. So in Ammonia we say second cousins in Nihiowe and Simis in Tuam. And that's because of respect. What do people have, kids today and people in general don't have? Respect, right? They don't respect authority. They don't respect teachers. They don't respect bus drivers. They don't respect parents. They don't respect chief and council. If we were to learn about that, but this is over a hundred and 40 years of this, this way that was, our minds are crazy now. Okay, father, mother, sister, brother. My, my friend said, my brother said, you know, bro, when you're talking about this family systems and kinship, you know what the white man did in the church? And I said, what? They bastardized our family system. And it made a lot of sense after. Because we were abused by the father, the priest, the mother, the nun, the sister, the brother. Those were the abusers in the boarding school, residential school. And we walk around with those unresolved issues and pains today. That's why I say, in my opinion, we're wounded spirits. We never, we get triggered in our life's journeys about those. So then that came, do as you're told, not how. And how the mind works, I'm not a psychologist. But if you tell somebody you're no good, you're no good, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy, you become to believe that and internalize that. So those things happen to our ancestors. So when they came out, how could they teach us? How many of you have ever, have you ever noticed somebody, especially the older people when they're eating, to have their hand like this? I have, it's just a habit from that school. The priest, the nun's going to take my food away. So it's just a habit. We learn those habits. And if we can learn the negative, we can learn the behaviors, the good behaviors of our people. And all of those things happen after treaty. Next one, please. I'm running out of time here. <clears throat> so what happens today? What is it like in our communities? You know those old people I used to work with? I, I was telling Nisha, I used to come visit Joe P. Cardinal, just one of the elders here. Uh, let Fred, Cardinal, Treaty, that guy in program this. Loss of identity. We don't know who we are now. We want to fit in over here. Have you ever watched a ping pong table? Badminton. Ball goes back and forth. When the, our ancestors, when my mom and dad came out of residence school, industrial school in the 30s, 40s. They didn't fit in the reserve. They didn't fit in the Munial system. So back and forth. And as our elder said, we need to be grounded. So how can you ground somebody going back and forth like this? 
Big scone, wapahte no ego. Big scone, magi go ego hitta ko. Unhealthy communities. Pogi te ukse. Lack of respect and kinship. How many of you hear people swear in front of their mom? Kids swearing in front of their sisters. In that old custom, Kayas, even though my late parents and I grew up in an alcoholic home, an unhealthy home also, my mom never drank, my dad had, was an alcoholic. But even though one of the things mom, Mama said, Nigawi, Kawa Huyako, Ethiopian, Kim Sak, Tihayansi, Kagi Nuhtawi, Kawa Huyako, Takigawi, Hayan, Kim Sak, Manatu, to Manati, Kagi Stay, Matsigangi Pogo, you have to respect them. Today, how many of you know, are aware that back then in the 40s, 50s, 60s, probably around then, you didn't speak to your mother-in-law. As a man, it's school, they didn't speak to the son-in-law, the mother-in-law. The father-in-law didn't speak to the daughter-in-law. Did you know that? And they didn't swear in front of the sisters, the females, and the brother, the sisters, vice versa. That's respect, being mindful. Today you don't see that, right? I never spoke back to my mother, no matter how many times. Or my dad. I was 16 years old, almost this big, and my dad was this much. I didn't fix the haystack, I was already drinking, I was already fighting men. And that's the last time he whipped me. He took the whip from the wagon box. Because I didn't fix the haystack properly. And I didn't swear, I didn't fight back, I just stood there like this. And that whip going around. Kawi got Astin, Kigawi, Kotawi. No more got me talking. Get that to you one up, Mato. I used to hear that. Don't talk back against your parents, your mom and dad. One day when they go home, it won't hurt as much and you won't regret it. And I don't. My point in telling you this is we need to go back to that respect, kinship. The value of kinship and respect and how they're connected. The mother would not talk to the son-in-law, mother-in-law. They could not, the father and the, the husband, you couldn't look in the eye. You have to look down. <clears throat> I told this story, I don't know if you were there, Russell, but I think, remember that? Me, as a man, can't talk to my tsukos. This tsukos, no tau, nigawi. Growing up, until about 12, 13 years old, I didn't know my dad's brother's names, my dad's sister's names, my mom's sister and brother's names. Did you know? Do you know your uncle's names already when you were small? 
This is how, and we never had a vehicle. Everywhere we went on a reserve was a wagon, team of horses, and to visit, visit. Or if they came by wagon. That's all I heard. No chawis and sis and sugos nigawis. How many of you see that and hear that today? We were not allowed to say their names because of respect. High respect to those uncles and aunties. Now today I hear mothers swearing in front of their kids. Sons, fathers swearing in front of their kids and their mothers swearing at their kids. So again, if you tell that kid you're no buddy blah 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 good enough times, why are you gonna grow up like that, right? Parenting is missing in our communities today. We how a soon spiritual gifted names missing in the Disempowerment, we're disempowered and disconnected. <clears throat> the loss of parenting ceremonies, and we're dependent. <clears throat> we're dependent, a lot of young people, especially today. I asked a lot of people over the years, why do you allow your son or your daughter to have a common law relationship at 16, 17 in your home? And this is most times the answer. At least this way, I know they're downstairs on a weekend. They're not out there. At least they're not partying. So what happens? Kukum, mom, my baby has no milk, pampers. And what do you do right away? Nah. Oh, here's the keys to the store, the town. What are you teaching those kids? That's what I would say. Huh? What are you teaching them? When a person does that to the children, there's no sense of responsibility. So how are those kids going to teach responsibility to their kids? And it was prophesied that kids will be having kids in the future. And we are there today, have been, for about a decade and a half. And now it's chief and council's fault there's overcrowding. I say that because I was in leadership and I've seen that. How come there's... You know, when I was chief, when I said about dependency, self-entitled people, and we we're all unhealthy, including me. I dealt with those elders in a band meeting. Those old people. Then I dealt with their children. How some people was to me. And I dealt with their grandkids. Three generations of certain families that believe you owe them something because you're a chief or a counselor. Nobody owes you anything. Creator gave you a mind, a heart and two arms, two feet. And those are things, just as an example, I was 16 years old, I had my own vehicle, and I took my late dad to the pan office. And I was driving, my drivers, and the chief walked by. Three counselors walked by, and he said to me in Cree, go up my chin and go says, na hani strans hukumahan wiso kuchao is na wiso. He was sitting here, and he pointed to me like this, don't you ever, guy with guts, Keep 
kain to na ni po ni te sunia uma na kane peo hen how many young people today are told that see that chief and that council don't you ever go hang around the ban office like this God gave you a mind, two hands, two feet, and I brought you up to work, to teach you to work, and your older brothers. Go out there and work. If you hang around there, you'll bring dishonor and shame to me. Hey, how many people today are told those things? And God is my witness, I've never been in there to stand like this. Ironically, I've been on the inside creating that dependency not knowing what I was doing as, as that, at that time. So that's that dependency. But you know who we need to depend on as Creator to bring back a lot of those teachings. And you know one of the reasons why? We don't do that. How many, how many of you in this room know me personally, my family? You've heard of me. You've heard of whatever, right? Look at this. You heard, but you don't know. Creator knows me. If I was to stand like this in any leg education, would they listen? No. You know why? A lot of them wouldn't listen. Do you know why? Why do you think? Hmm? Yeah, related. We're all related in the communities. But the real reason is we're judgmental of ourselves, our own people. Now, if I did this, probably 1%, 5% of our people would listen because they would rather look at my past. And you know what that called? In order for us to move forward, we need to forgive. We need to learn what happened to us yesterday, bring that knowledge and understanding to today. And we need to make that choice inside of our hearts. We need to let go of what happened yesterday. We need to forgive in order for us to move into the future. You can continue to teach and teach and teach unless, because we bring that energy. If I'm having a bad day, I'm on a breathing apparatus with this uh, sleep apnea. And I had a heart attack last September. And... Uh, so I'm on all these medications, but I don't take them now because I'm using something else. I was teasing my wife this morning. If that mask is not on right, the seal all night, there's a little angry face emoji that pops up. <laughs> and I said, I'm not gonna be angry today. I'm gonna be happy today. Two days ago, there was a little yellow smiley face. So even that machine trying to give me a bad time. What's the guys? So we need to forgive. We need to let go of yesterday in order for us. And if I came in here, if Dolly and I had a big fight all the way down here this morning, you would feel it. You would feel that energy. We think we can hide it. No, we can't. And as you walk into the classroom like that, you and your partner add an angry or angry man or whatever your children, and you bring it in the class, the kids feel that. We all know that. So we need to try and maintain a positive energy. 
But we need to let go of yesterday. Don't hang on to yesterday's past. I'll end with this. Oh, two minutes. <laughs> this is what I was told. They knew I was clinically dead for about nine or ten minutes. And they didn't want me in hell, so they sent me up there. And they didn't want me up there, so they put me back here. <laughs> I was in a coma for four nights and four days. A lot of what I'm sharing with you was reinforced up there. What I was told on this earth, I was told by the old ones up there. And when I was taught this, this is, you're all ed educators here, first of all, right? Raise your hands. How many of you believe your temple, your fire, is your classroom? Were you taught that in university? Or did old people teach you that? Mm. This is my classroom. That lodge was my classroom when I was born 150 years ago. I learned what the tribal members did. I observed. I heard. So now, if you were meant, that's what Musoma said, God gave them to me some of what I see in all the past. If you were always, always to look in somebody's past and to judge them, first of all, nobody should judge one another. Because who are we? We're all God's children. We're all created equal. We all have different gifts. He said, look, move your... As an exercise, I get you to stand up those of you can stand up. Think this, and I'll end it off with this. If we were, can you move your neck to the right, your head, as far as you can? Straight up, right. Move it to the left. Now extend your arms this way. Both arms. Can you see? The tip of your finger. Move it as far as you can. Both arms towards the back. Make room as far as you can. Okay, remember where your arms approximately were. Now close your eyes for a second and say, I will move my arms further back. Now move your arms further back. How many of you felt they were further back? That's the power of the mind. And you can sit now. Have a seat. Sit down, class. Yeah, I've always wanted to say that. Yeah. Did you know Santa Claus was around Cree country? But we as people, we make fun of each other, tease each other, and he couldn't handle it. You know when Santa Claus goes, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Well, the Nihio Santa Claus used to go, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and he couldn't handle it, so he quit. So now we have the Munio Santa Claus. But if God meant for you to stay in somebody's past, and I was told this in a relationship, this old Kokum showed me this. Move your head as far as you can. You can't see. Like an owl can go 360 degrees. Creator did not design your body for your head to go all the way around. If Creator meant for you to live in somebody's past, Creator would have put two eyes in the back of your head. If Creator meant for you 
to walk always in somebody's past and your past and unforgiveness, he would put these feet this way also. He designed our body in such a way that we could only glance this far and to see in this way. He put our hearts on this side. So when you look over your shoulder, that's the happy times of your past. Your first baby, your first grandchild. <coughs> the day you got married, when you graduated. Over here, there's no heart on the right side. So when you glance on this side, that's when you lost a loved one. Grief, got hurt, pain, back here. But you can only take a glimpse of it. You're not supposed to stay there. So if you judge somebody and have unforgiveness, you're gonna walk around like this and you won't see where you're going and you're gonna bang into something and hurt yourself. Plus, you're gonna have a kink here, pain. So don't look at each other's past. Don't judge each other. Communicate, speak, talk to each other. Forgive each other, love each other. Not for us, but for our grandchildren's sake. So I thank you for inviting me Learn about yesterday, what happened, but don't stay there. Take that knowledge, you make that choice, walk into the future. Continue to live in that positive mentality and learn and think indigenous. So when you talk, don't joke, don't laugh at each other. Empower each other. We don't discourage ourselves from trying to speak Cree, making mockery of people. It discourages and remember we're hurting enough as it is. Why should we hurt each other? May Creator bless each and every one of you. And I didn't mean to hurt anyone, or no malice intended. I'm not an elder. I'm just a person reminding. That's my rule. May Creator bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.